Hey there, I'm Lori. Welcome to my sewing room. It is a icy, dreary day here in Central Texas, but fortunately the power is back on. So I thought I would use the time, because everybody's housebound, right? Nobody can go anywhere, the highways are all closed. I thought I'd use today to uh, make a video and show you how to make this really simple table runner. Um, let me show you this. So this is just half of it. Mine's uh, it folded in half, but you can kind of see. I'm not sure what to call the pattern. Um, it it looks like kind of like a chain link to me. Um, the inspiration for the pattern comes from a picture that I found on Pinterest. And I looked everywhere to find an existing pattern and I never found one. So I ended up just making my own and it's not that hard. So I'm gonna show you how to make that today. To make this table runner, you'll need some charm squares, um, some background fabric, uh, about half a yard of background fabric, about a half a yard of backing fabric, and then about a quarter fabric, uh, quarter yard for your binding. Now, for the table runner that I'm making, I'm using 28 charm squares. Now, if you want to make one a, a table runner that's smaller or larger, you'll just adjust your number of charm squares accordingly. Um, from the background uh, fabric, I'm going to cut 18 two and a half inch squares and eight five and a half inch squares, which will be subcut in half diagonally for the setting triangles. I'm also using a two and a half inch border from the background fabric. I'll put all this in the description box as well so you don't have to remember it or write it all down. To get started, you want to take all of your charm squares and cut them in half. Then take one stack of halves and cut them in half again. I'm cutting them three or four at a time to save time, but obviously you can cut them in whatever number you feel comfortable with. Just make sure to try to keep the stack of quarter squares in the same order as the half squares. This will make it easier for you when you put them together to form the pattern that we want. Once you have your charm squares cut, then you'll cut your background fabric. First cut your um, two and a half inch squares and you'll need 18 of those. Then cut your five and a half inch squares and you'll need eight of those, which you'll then cut in half on the diagonal to form your setting triangles. And then last, cut four length of fabric strips uh, two and a half inches wide to form your um, border once you have the inner patches all sewn together. Okay. 
to lay out the design, start with your half squares of the charm squares and then the stack of quarter squares that matches it, that's in the same order. And then also take your quarter, um, your two and a half inch squares of the background fabric. And I suggest start off by just laying them out however. And then once you've got them all laid out, then you can move them around so that you've got the color placement that you like. Um, and as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm putting in my my little white background squares and then when I've got all of those laid out, I go back with my other stack of quarter squares and fill in the hole uh, that is left and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. But um, so let's go ahead and, and get these laid out. This is how I have mine laid out. Um, once you have yours laid out the way you like with your charm squares and charm square fabric and your background fabric, then take the remaining quarter squares that you have left and fill in those um, gaps that are in between the two background squares. Once you have that done, then go ahead and lay in your um, setting triangles into um, each side and then you'll stitch them in the angled rows and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Now to stitch this part together you're going to want to stitch this together before you put in your setting triangles on either side. I just want to show you here that the first thing you're going to do is to stitch your background to your smaller charm square fabric. In this case it's, it's two charm square fabrics. And you're going to stitch these together. And once you've stitched these together, then you'll stitch these to this. And you'll need to trim a little bit off because this will, once these are stitched together, they're four and a half inches instead of five. So let me show you that. All right, I've stitched these together. And now I'm going to stitch this together. Once I've got it stitched, then I'll trim off this extra this extra piece so that um, I know that it's going to be straight. So once you have these uh, units all stitched together and you've got them in the arrangement that you like, you'll go through and put in your setting triangles, which I've got here. So this would be another row, and so you're gonna be stitching them at an angle. So I would stitch this one first, and then stitch this to that, and that makes up one row. And then you'll once you've got it all laid out, you'll leave it laid out and stitch them as you go along. I find it easier to leave them laid out, and I'll take a design board and take one section at a time and stitch it together and then stitch all the different um, rows together. This is what it should look like um, at this point after you've got the units all stitched together um, and then the next thing you'll do is add the borders. One thing to keep in mind is that you do have several match points between the units, which made it a bit tricky for me to figure out how to press the seam allowances so that the seams would nest. In a few places, I had to let a couple of seams go opposite directions. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that the setting triangles are cut on the bias and with all the handling of stitching them together, they have a tendency to get a little bit wavy. So I, when I pressed it, I starched the living daylights out of it on both sides to make the fabric behave. Um, and that really seemed to do the trick. Um, so now I'm ready to add on the borders and then I'll get it up on the long arm. All right, so I've got the um, borders on. I put this edge on first, trimmed it down, then put this side in, and then did the same on the opposite end and then put the sides on. Now for the side, I had to put in a couple of seams in order for it to be long enough because I'm, I'm pretty much just using scraps for this. Um, I was able to get by with just one seam on once on one border right there and two on the other and so I put one down at one end and another down at the other end so they wouldn't be close together. Now for the backing I have found this in my stash and I think that will look nice on the back. And then for the border, this is the closest I could find. I kind of wanted a darker blue, but I'm, I'm strictly using my stash for this. And I don't have anything, I don't have enough yardage of anything darker. But I think, I think this will look okay. Because um, it's close enough to the blues that are in there that I think it'll look nice. and It'll make a nice table runner. Sorry about the awkward angle here, but um, I have a lot of difficulty figuring out how to get good video of the quilting process because the machine keeps getting in the way. First, if you don't have a long arm, you absolutely can quilt this on a sit-down sewing machine. Um, I'm doing some different designs in each section, but you could also do a simple stitch in the ditch or uh, a meander stitch. I do tend to quilt table runners a bit more densely than I would a bed quilt because I want it to lay really flat on the table so things don't fall over. Once you have your table runner quilted, then you'll need to trim away the excess batting and backing. Um, and then you'll need to calculate the binding, the amount of uh, fabric that you'll need for your binding. So what I do is I measure the outer perimeter of the table runner, and in my case, it's 146 inches. And most quilting fabric is about 44 inches wide with the selvage still on. So I always round down to 40 inches to be on the safe side. So 146 inches divided by 40 inches gives me three point something. So that means I'll cut four strips of binding fabric. I cut mine at two and a half inches wide, so that's 10 inches total. So I connect my binding strips on the diagonal to distribute the bulk of the fabric and avoid having a lump. Once I have all of my binding strips cut and then stitched together, I fold them in half and iron them. And then I stitch it onto the back side of the table runner. I do this because I will machine stitch mine then to the front after it, I stitch it to the back, fold it around to the front, and then machine stitch it on. Now what you see me doing here is I take my seam gauge and I measure one quarter inch from the edge 
of the of the table runner to the binding and I make a mark there and then I stitch right up to that mark then I pivot let's see here yeah I stitch right up to it then I pivot and sew right off the edge and then you'll see what I do here yeah so there I turn and sew off the edge cut the thread and then what I do is I fold the remaining amount back so that it forms a straight line with the the turn of the fabric you'll see me point to that here yeah you see that straight line and then I put my fingers on that crease my left hand on the crease and fold it back so that it lines up with the edge and I put a pin only on the crease and then I continue stitching from the edge down to the next point and I keep doing that with all of the corners so that I get a really nice mitered edge. I hope that was clear. Once you have stitched um, your binding all the way around the table runner and then joined it together, um, then you'll uh, take an iron and press the binding forward and then turn, turn it over and I'll show you here. You'll flip it around to the front and then stitch it down right on the edge and you'll do that all the way around the table runner. This is the final result, and as you can see, it turned out pretty well. The quilting isn't perfect, but I think this will look really nice on my kitchen table. After I wash it, it will have that nice crinkled look. I'm particularly pleased with how the mitered corners on the binding turned out because I had real trouble with that the first time I made this table runner. One thing that I do to help me get a really straight line right up next to the edge of the binding is I use a special presser foot. I don't know what it's called, but I'll show it to you here. It's a number five on the Bernina, but all manufacturers make a similar foot. It has a little metal flange that sticks down below the foot to help guide your stitches along the edge. So that's it for this video. I hope you got some good ideas for a project of your own. If you have any questions about anything, be sure to put them in the comment section below and I'll respond. Also be sure to check out my Etsy shop where I have other crafty sewing projects. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.